Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Chronicles of Hollywood History, past, present, and future. Welcome, and here now, Corey Gomez. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chronicles of Hollywood History, past, present, and future. Everyone knows how much I love my 90s martial arts movies, and today I am joined by Mr. Jalal Merhai from Tiger Claws, Black Pearl, Talons of the Eagle, TC2000, and more. Thank you so much for joining me here today. How you doing, Corey? How, uh, oh, now, you, uh, what, what is your, um, I guess, uh, to start off, what is your martial arts background? Uh, I started with Taekwondo, but then uh, soon after I changed the uh, city, so I moved into something, I would say, more like Shotokan style. Uh, and I got my ground belt in that, then I moved to Toronto, and I met some people that were doing Kung Fu, and that was my dream, always to do Kung Fu and what then. And that's when I joined the uh, Tikumar Chow, and I learned the uh, Chow Lai Kotan Hungar style. And uh, the rest is history. I went back to Shotokan later with uh, Sensei Pickles, and uh, I got my second band on that one. But, uh, you know, so I continued both. But Kung Fu is my main one after. How'd you get into the movie business? Uh, initially, I got cast. Uh, into from a tournament the producer was in a major tournament in Ontario and he was looking for martial artists that had a certain look and I won grand championship uh, in weapons and open hand so he approached me and a couple of other martial artists and then starting to uh, bring us into the production to meet other people and then train us to be in this project but in the meantime, I had already been going to college at night and studying film business uh, in George Brown College in Toronto. So I was already studying it and looking into it. Uh, I couldn't do it full time because I had my business. So I did very business to run, so I couldn't do it full time. Now, was your first film, was it, because uh, I know they came out around the same year, at least I saw them around the same year, uh, was it Black Pearls or was it Tiger Claws? No, Black Pearls was the first film. Uh, and that one took two years to shoot because we shot as I had my other business too, so I couldn't do it full time. And, uh, you know, it had its challenges uh, too. Everyone was the first time I working on it and uh, there wasn't enough direction where to go and what to do. But uh, yeah, at least there was passion and love. And uh, it was fun to do. We shot in Ontario and in Hong Kong. And you got to work with uh, Bolo Young, um, you know, right first off, which that had to be pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. I met him in Hong Kong to some friends of mine. Uh, they were working in Hong Kong for business, and we met at Jackie Chan's club. Because you've worked with Bolo many times, uh, Fearless Tiger, Tiger Claws, TC2000, Tiger Claws 2, you guys had a really good working relationship. Yeah, we built a friendship, and then, uh, you know, it, 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 it's entertainment. We put friends with people when I work with them, but uh, again, it's, uh, it's not social friendship, it's friendship and respect for the art and for the entertainment. Now, do you know the Tiger Claw style? Did you train in it? Yes, I did. I did train in it, but, uh, I mean, when you look into all these styles, you have, in the Kung Fu, you have multi-styles, with the, the dragon, with the tiger, with the, the crane. Uh, you, so you learn the snake, and sometimes you like one more than the other. And I felt sometimes all of them have something to give, but it's just, when you're doing it in movies, you're a little bit spending more time to do it. Uh, how should I say? Um... It's more like for the movie itself. Now when like you you're, it's not like just you can't do just the art. You gotta do something fancy so the movie's the you know so it looks good on screen and uh, it, you know it gives up some kind of mystique about it. Well, that's what I think was so neat about uh, Tiger Claws, which I was telling you my my wife who's. You know, did not grow up watching these films like I did. You know, she really right. liked that. And, uh, you know, that was really good. And, I mean, God, what is it now? Almost 30 years. 
and people yeah. still watch it. I mean, people would, I mean, we'd all, I know as I speak for everyone, say we'd love a big Blu-ray set uh, of these films, but, uh, you know, Ebola was the serial killer using the tiger claw. You were there to stop him with Cynthia Rothrock, and it was just such an ahead-of-its-time film, just such a great, great movie. Do you have a lot of fond memories making that one? To me, that's my favorite, because I was working on that from the beginning. I mean, the idea for that movie came from one of my students, and uh, we were talking about how to do it, and he's also a writer that worked for me for over 12 years, to the more than uh, 14 years, and Steve Mondo, and then he was also one of my students, and we were working out in a club that, you know, you, it's like a very industrial place. And when you're working out, uh, the sun hits all the time in the evening and in the summer, the sun stays too late and you could see the light seeping in there. So it has a speak to it. Uh, I don't know if you could imagine it, uh, like strings of light coming in from outside mm -hmm. through the windows. And as we were watching, we're going through the routine, then we start somehow talking about it after and we said, I got it. I know what we're going to do with this one. And we went further into it and further into it, and uh, it became a project of love, uh, you know, and we spent time. So I approached, uh, at the time, I just made a deal with uh, Universal, and uh, I approached them with the idea. They liked it, but they said, first, shoot something. So I brought Cynthia to Toronto. We shot something with her. I called Bolo. He came. We shot something just for a promo. And a part of that promo ended up in the actual film. I showed that to Universal, they liked it. And then I showed to the other partner, Shapiro Griffin House, uh, which I'm not Universal, through Shapiro Griffin House initially. And uh, they liked it, so that was, the rest is history. So we got the film made. It was our first film that was for the finance. Now when you did uh, two and three, they kind of switched uh, to more like supernatural elements. What made you decide to take it in that kind of direction? Um, to me, if I wanted to bring Bolo back, we needed something like this. Plus, I wanted to switch Bolo to a good guy. And I needed an out to bring him on third. I was going to bring him on third, it just his schedule didn't work. And also, I brought Cynthia on third, on the third one. But when she arrived on set, we found out she was pregnant. Mm. So, uh, then we agreed she can't do much. She did a couple of fights, and then we changed the story a bit. So she disappears, comes back at the end with minimum action mm -hmm. in there, but she couldn't have done much action. So you look at the year we did that, and she has a daughter now from that. And uh, so, but we ended up uh, using Carter Wong, which I love. And then we had the script for Tyre Class 4, but that was never made. That was with Bolo, us getting Bolo back to Spanish, to the tunnel that was there. And that explains, I'm not going to say it because we might still do it, what that tunnel was that he went into. Do you think we'll ever see a collector edition of those films? Um, you know, like a no, Blu-ray release or soon. anything? Oh, we will, okay. Oh yeah, very soon, very soon. We're already... We're starting mastering all the old films into 4K, and uh, the, it will be on Blu-ray coming out soon with some kind of interviews and uh, commentaries. Now, do you? Now, I know you were the uh, producer on these films. Do you? Do you have the rights to to all of them? I own all the rights to all of them. Well, then you know the next one I got to ask you, which uh, I hope we get a a big big collector set of as well. Uh, one of the most popular martial arts movies of the 90s was you and Billy Blanks in Talons of the Eagle. And that was just an yeah. amazing. That, the, mon the training montage in that where you guys are learning Eagle Claw is one of the best montages yes. I've ever seen in a film. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that was great. And I've been, uh, I've been chatting with Billy about doing sequel. The thing is, we did start a sequel with that and it was called Back in Action. Yeah, one with Roddy Piper. Uh, well, the thing is, it became about the type, but that was back in action for Talent of the Eagle, the initial oh. script. But when it became Rod, it became less martial arts and more action. And that was the big fight I had with uh, uh, the my partners in the U.S. that were my gateway to, 
Universal and uh, from the Shapiro Looking House Company. And so we got into legality over it. So they changed the type, but they couldn't use that as a thing because I did not agree to their vision. And I walked out of the project and ended up being something else and they moved with it into that. I mean, I love uh, the Audi Piper, it's fine, but it's not that thing So I told them you can't use the type. So they kept the word back in action and ended up being that film. Uh, I don't think I've told anyone that except my lawyers to that <laughs> <laughs> at the time. <laughs> but uh, it's been long enough. So. Oh, Talons was amazing. And I mean, you and, and uh, Billy and you had Matthias Hoos, James Hong. I mean, that was a, a hell of a hell of a cast. The fight with Billy and Matthias at the end was amazing. Yes. Yeah, I, uh, I, I wish we could. I, I can't wait to see... Uh, a remaster of that. Now, then you did uh, another with Billy. You were in TC2000 with him as well. TC2000 and Expect No Mercy. The TC2000, though, you didn't, you yourself didn't do a lot of martial arts in that film. How come? Well, because I wanted to play something different. So I wanted to, initially, I did a lot more action. And again, I did TC2000 at the period when we were in disagreement with those who distributed the house people. So, uh, they ended up recutting the final cut, and that's why it ended up the way it is. Actually, they cut a lot of my role out, so there's, uh, I, I would say there's at least 15 minutes of my stuff that's no longer there. So, and that's when we parted ways, Shapiro, the King House, and myself, so I ended up just for one. Now, if you if you were able to put that one out on a, a Blu-ray, would you have that footage reinserted? Do you still have it? I still have it. I have it in original 35, but uh, it's a lot of work. Like today, not many editors are working in 35, so I have to remaster all of the next to re, you know, if you know the process, a long process to go back with the original next because it's, there is no final master of it that's all in one place. So you have to recut, remaster, and put, and there is a huge expense to that, and I'm not sure if we're going to go into it, but um, it's there. It would be different. Definitely, would be interesting. What was it like doing Operation Golden Phoenix with? Uh, that was the first time you got to work with Lauren Abaddon. Yeah, uh, would, that was a great film that was shot uh, in segments again uh, because of certain situations that we were in. But uh, I, in the end, it ended up not exactly the way we wanted it. It was more of a James Bond style type of movie. Uh, but I love it. Uh, I love the scenery in it because I think it's one of our most elaborate like, scenery-wise. We were in some amazing locations, superb locations. I brought James Hong back on that one too. And Lauren was great to work with. And uh, I mean, he... he, he he makes him to an amazing bad guy uh, and a great good guy. I mean, Lauren could have had a chance to be, uh, you know, for first whatever reasons that he just, I don't know why, did not become what he could have been or then, you know, so he, he, he's good. He's great martial artist and he's good act too, so. Yeah, it's when you had him again in the uh, in the circuit films or at least in uh, in one and three. Well, I, I always try to bring my friends back. I mean, that's the way I call up on them and I bring them back. And, uh, you know, so to me, uh, I like to be loyal to people who are decent with me and uh, bring them back uh, anytime for any role. I mean, I, it's not, you don't force anyone to do a small role or something. You say, hey, I'm doing this. You want to be in it? You know, just like, hey, hey. And uh, everything has a price too. But still, uh I like to have people around. I, I like to maintain the same people. This, uh, to me, I, I believe in loyalty. Like, uh, and if they don't want, that's fine. I'm, I'm cool too. That's fine, maybe whatever. Hey, let me ask you. You got to work with um, David Bradley on Expect to Die, and you know David Bradley had you know Expect to Die. He had a couple Canon films. He had the the Revenge of the or the American Ninja films. And then he just kind of disappeared. Um, I know it's a weird question, but do you have any idea what happened to him? <laughs> I know a little bit, and I don't want to talk about it. It breaks my heart because David, David is actually one of the most talented martial arts actors as a, an actor because he did soap opera too. Mm -hmm. So he, he was actually a real actor that does great martial arts, which 
they are very few. As much as I love all the others, which were great martial artists who did acting, he was, no, he was an actor. And I used him in two films. And uh, one of them, I made him as a lead. And I just directed, but that one was a low budget called Crisis. And we did it, we shot it in 11 days. But it was a cute film, we shot in Saskatoon. And uh, it, it was an amazing little film for the money that we did. Uh, and I would, both I did back to back two films because I always like to find people for more than one film if I can. Just because I'm investing in them, I might as well, you know, have them for longer. And uh, I had him also an expected guy. He played bad guy. And expected guy and he was great and very uh, actually easy to work with. Were you uh, were you surprised? I mean, I'm sure everyone was. I was depressed um, when the because you know all these movies came out and they were all you know so many of them were straight to the videos to the blockbusters, Hollywood videos, and all that. When that stopped, the straight to video of the '90s. Did you see that coming, or is that something no one could have predicted? I saw it coming a bit, and I saw it coming because I had, at the end when it stopped, uh, also I had a good relationship with Blockbusters. They took Circuit 1 and 2, and uh, the CEO at the time, uh, which I became friends with him after, explained to me what happened. What happened is, the direct to video Blockbuster after that, what it did, what made it a success is what killed it. It killed, Blockbuster killed all the mom and pop stores, which to us were the ones that were buying all our stuff. Mm -hmm. Because they had a direct link to the audience and they knew there is a customer. And there is still customer for those. Because you see them in bins in Walmart and they're still selling. Uh, then Blockbusters came in, took it over, and then they start picking them, things themselves. So they killed all the competition. But when, in the middle of the 2000s, when digital world starts coming, you know, and also all the streaming started, they felt, and the president at the time told the board, guys, we could have digital and we have our stores. Maybe cut down some stores. But the board pushed, said, no, we don't want just to give digital. Digital is not going to work. Because we need people to come, buy the movie, rent a movie, buy an old movie, and buy popcorn and chocolate and soda, and we'll make more money on those. They did not realize what they were doing. Like, sometimes uh, all these geniuses are not so genius. Mm -hmm. And uh, Blockbuster just beat them, and yet they had the library. They could have sustained it. They could have done better than Blockbuster. They would have used that example, plus the physical location they had. They did that. And um, so, in, in the end, that killed them. When they went under, it just, the, we had no further outlet. Everything else was left as the bigger, you know, the, the bigger players, and they did not play the same way. Uh, yet, I believe, because I know just a year ago, I put things on YouTube, and suddenly I have millions of views. And I did it because I found other people were stealing my stuff and putting it on YouTube. So, so we created our own channel. And uh, so there are audiences out there, and uh, there are lots of martial artists out there. So hopefully the next generation will create something to bring back the creativity and bring back the dream of martial art, good martial arts films. And I mean, look, look at the, I think Netflix now has. Uh, that I kid as a TV show. Yeah, the Cobra and they're Kai doing show, pretty. They're doing pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love back in the you know I think you know one week I'm renting yeah. uh, Tiger Claw with Jalal Merhai. The next week I'm getting Blood Fist with Don the Dragon. The next week there's a Cynthia yeah. Rothrock film. Do you think we'll ever see like because uh, you know streaming's so big? Maybe we'll see all these, you know, the you, you, the real martial artists. Because I've always liked the real martial artists doing these martial arts films. That's why I've been so so partial to all of your titles. Do you think the streaming Thanks. will ever get a boom to where we'll start seeing, you know, that that kind of stuff happen again? It will be different because what I noticed with the network, the, they would rather push for an actor pretending to do martial arts and some people doing it mm -hmm. than martial arts. Because martial artists generally are not actors. But they play what they play, and they are, you know, same thing like people who play action, like Stallone, like uh, 
Schwarzenegger, they are who they are. Uh, but uh, I think you, right now there's different entertainment. Right now there's people have their own little YouTube clips, they have their own online. So if the same thing is there, but differently, then I don't think people are watching, many people at least are watching full hour and a half in front of the computer or on TV. So segments will be different. Like I'm doing right now a TV, the circuit TV show. We already shot six episodes, we're shooting six more. Uh, as soon as COVID is over, we stop for COVID. And uh, you would like it. Uh, it it's a little bit of throw back into the martial arts days again with some story and uh, keeping the same characters. And I'm bringing in a lot of good cameos of martial artists that I've used before. What channel, or do you know where that's going to stream when it comes out, where it's going to air? It will be on Amazon Prime. Okay. Yeah. Hey. I have my own channel on Amazon Prime too, where, where, I, where we're putting the movies right now. And then what is what is the Amazon channel? Is that the film one? Is it film one? Film one. Yeah, it's film one. And that's also your or YouTube you, channel. You could write Jalal Marai film, and then you'll get the same result, most probably. Plus, I have other shows there that not martial art, too. I have TV shows. Uh, we just started that, so we're still uploading all this stuff into it. I know the, un, you know, unfortunately, like a lot like Black Pearls, TC2000, Towns of the Eagle, the, those three right away. Uh, I had to buy DVD releases from over in the UK. Um, I think my Tiger Claws 3 might even be from the UK as well. Expect No Mercy, I know, is UK. Yeah, um, yeah I, I really look forward to seeing these get uh, you know proper releases here in the States. But yeah, un- unfortunately, a lot of the older ones, uh, you know, if you're looking to outsource them, it's fans, it's it's the UK. But you said now you've got them up on your channel streaming them. Yeah, I'm streaming them as SD. And uh, so they're all on Amazon. They're streaming in UK and US for sure. And uh, they're on Amazon Prime. You'll find uh, all of them, except Talent and TC Thousand. They're not up there yet. But Tiger Claws, yes, the three of them are there. Circuit three of them are there. Circuit one, Circuit two, Circuit three. Uh, we have Extract to Die, and there are a bunch of others. But uh, and Golden Phoenix is there. Uh, so gradually we're putting them all up. But soon we will have the full. Uh, you know, a uh, Blu-ray version, which will be a lot higher quality, but that one will be paying those are free right now. I would buy a Blu-ray set of Tiger Claws from you right now. I would. I'd just say, take my money. Thank you, thank you. When it comes out, you will, because I have a lot of people who are interested, and uh, it's coming out very soon. I, I have noticed, you know, and, and I don't know if it's uh, what has happened, but within maybe because of COVID, within the last handful of months. I'm seeing more more clips and more people watching like your films and Don the Dragons, Lauren Avedon's. I'm seeing more people starting to now, these years later, you know, uh, get into them again, which has got to be a great feeling for you. I think so. Uh, just, uh, oh, I, I love to hear all the comments, good, bad, and ugly, because I know, listen, to me, it was a dream, and I did it, and it's just a miracle what I did, uh, and I did it old age. I started this business at uh, age 35, so uh, I'm, I'm cool about whatever comes out of it. I'm happy I made it. Uh, and uh, the, uh, when I watch, uh, you know, I go through the comments and uh, I see the streaming. I'm happy, just it's there. People are seeing it, and uh, you know, so many people would send messages and say thank you, and to me that means a lot. Is it true you blew up your own Porsche for a film? I did. Uh, I shot up the windows of the Porsche. I blew up my own Mercedes. Mercedes, okay. The, in Black Pearls, the green Mercedes that they used in the chase, I had to do that uh, because we waited for three days. The the crew said they have, somebody has a shell of similar color. doesn't have to be 450, but because from far you won't see it as much, to, once it blows up, it will work out. But it cost 30000 a day to shoot action. And so we had the crew there for two days, and the car didn't come. We shot around the scene, everything. They said, guys, we can't. We've got to leave this location tomorrow. So on set, immediately they came. And they said, guys, said, guys okay, since we used my own car in the chase at the time, and said, and, uh, here, take it, blow it up. Uh, it was for the day anyway. So, uh, yeah, we, so they had to... You know, you have to take everything out from the inside because then you blow it up. Otherwise, the fire department would not allow it. it would burn the fumes from the seat. So they have to empty it. 
And when they blew it up and were sitting far away, actually a piece of the engine was not tied properly or taken away, flew literally over my head and landed behind me. That could have killed me, but um, we made it. You know, another weird question, everybody, and I'm assuming it was because you had a ponytail, but back then, I, 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 when I still had hair, I had a ponytail, too. Uh, they used to call you the uh, the straight-to-video or the Beirut Steven Seagal. Uh, did that ever, I don't know who the hell. Did that ever bother Started you? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, to me, I was like, who the hell started this? I mean, like, I never claimed it, and I don't want it. You know, <laughs> I respect each person for who they are, and that's it. But I wasn't trying to be anybody else. So I don't. Know. I mean, I had a. I don't because, have hair now, but yeah. I had a ponytail back then. All guys had ponytails back then. Yeah, we all did. Uh, I mean, just you know, if you notice black clothes, I didn't. Uh, no, you uh, didn't. Uh, after, uh, yeah, you didn't in Talon Twitter, did yeah. you? No, no. Yeah, just Tiger Cloud, the first Tiger Cloud. That's all. See, it shows you how iconic it is. They they they, they gave you a nickname yeah. off of one film. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Now, uh, do you have anything? Uh, I know you've got the the show in the works for people that are fans of yours. I know they can find film one. You know, we've said on Amazon, on YouTube. Do you have a website or are you on Twitter? Or yeah. Anything like that? I am on Twitter as uh, film one, also as uh, I think at at Jalan. But I uh, I'm not sure exactly how it is. Uh, I don't use it as much. I use it from time to time. But uh, the film one dot ca that's my uh, main website that uh, usually has a link to everything. It has a link to Amazon, a link to YouTube, a link to our upcoming project. It's more of a wholesale of a, uh, you know, website, but uh, F-I-L-M-O-N-E dot C-A. You know, one other thing I got to ask you is we've, ever since Stallone hit so big with the Expendables, we've always heard the, you know, the rumors there's going to be a B Expendables with uh, Cynthia Rothrock, Don the Dragon, you know, all uh, Matthias Hughes, all these films. Have you ever got the itch to maybe make a film like that and bring back all of you guys into one big picture? I mean, I've done that a few times. Uh, if you think of uh, PC 2000, that's a similar thing to I brought so many great guys together, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, And I've spoken with all these guys, but Everyone talks a lot. The thing is, none of them is an actual producer. And I love them all. And then I tell them, okay, how are we going to finance it, guys? And then generally, quite often, they look at me because I'm the one that actually is a producer. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, right now, I still, I've tried the network. There is no interest from the network. So it's very hard. And then when you bring them all together, too, you need to give them enough action for all and still make a story work. So imagine... If you don't have the budget to do it and give them enough, how should I say, space and time. If you give actor A five minutes, you get to give actor B five minutes, actor C five minutes, introduction into their character. And it's a very tough thing to do. I mean, what Salon pulled is very special. It's been done before slowly, uh, you know, on a smaller scale, but it became well known. They are what these people are. And uh, so by the time we do the second and third film, it was easier. It moved forward. But there, uh, we'll see what happens. We have a few scripts similar to that idea. But, uh, you know, I hope something works out. To me, it was bringing TC2000 again type of thing, like, you know, uh, same style, continue that. Uh, I think that's as close as I would have done it again. Did you um? You had a good working relationship with Billy Blanks. Uh, what did you think when his uh, when Tybo just blew up the way it did? Well, funny enough, uh, the first tape we did before Tybo blew up, we it's called Karobix, and it was his tape and I, uh, my production company. We we produced it for him, but then uh, he decided to move into a different direction. He couldn't use, I think, the name Tybo. So uh, got in different uh, distributor and they changed it to uh, a, a Karobic, can you use Karobic? So got a different uh, distributor and they used Taibo. And the guy approached me, I guess, thinking that I might claim copyright. But when I found out that, that he's helping uh, Billy, I did not claim anything. I just figured, no, he's my buddy. I'm not going to, you know, stand in his way. Mm -hmm. So uh, I knew before it came, I actually had to... One day I might release because I own the rights to the initial tape that he did, which I did for him, and it was Taibo. 
that might put it out there. <laughs> and I'm very happy for him. And we're still friends. We talk all the time. Uh, uh, but, you know, yeah, we, we talked about projects many times. But his managers and agents, he became on a different level. We always advise him against it. But uh, I'm sure he regret, regrets it now because life doesn't wait for anyone. You know, you move on. Because I know he loves film business more than anything. And I still hope to bring him into the circuit and I have a script for two episodes with him specifically to bring in. So uh, let's see what happens. Is there anyone that you uh, always wanted to work with but you haven't had a chance to yet? There are, but uh, it's better not to say it. So, uh, you know, there are, yes. But uh, uh, I usually try to work with whoever I wanted to work with. Like, I approach people, I have no problem. And uh, I respect all, and definitely uh, there are many of them that uh, were friends now, well, associates, uh, but it just didn't work out at the time. You know, many of them, they know themselves. You know, I've approached them, we tried, the schedule didn't work, or the numbers didn't work, or the script didn't work, or whatever it is. But, you know, in the, it's, a, it's a very tough business to please everyone. And sometimes what you do today might regret, and not me, I never do, but others they might regret tomorrow. Or what you don't do today, you might or might not. And uh, what you, where you perceive yourself today, you realize tomorrow, no, I'm not there, I'm somewhere else. Like, you don't know, you know, you know, like, to think about it myself, that my biggest, highest level of my career, I didn't know when I had it, which it was when I did immediately back-to-back -back with Universal three films, like I Cross, Talent, and TC2000. And uh, sometimes you don't realize that that was the highest I've done because we came out theatrical around the world, and, uh, you know, the budgets were pre-financed, so it's a different time. After that, it became more straight to video. Well, I personally loved all your films. You know, I looked forward to watching them when I was a kid. Uh, well, not a kid, I was younger. Um, you know, I look forward to watching them. Uh, I still like watching them. I've shown my son all of these films. I've shown my wife all these films. You know, hopefully they can keep finding new generations. And, you know, I want to thank you so much for doing this. Uh, your movies, I was in my 20s uh, when I started watching these. And they, they to this day, all these films, uh, especially Tiger and uh, Tiger Claw 1 and Towns of the Eagle, they have very special places in my heart. And, uh, you know, I used to work out thank and train. And, well, I would have these movies on in the background. There you go. I'm glad uh, I could do that because that's, to me, that's that's the whole, from day one, I, that's what I always wished to do training workout films and I try to have the least blood in my film because you know people say oh, it's not realistic a bunch of them but here I'm not fully really gory you want to see blood go see something else to me I want to see the art and sometimes I did more just action because that's what distributors want but in the end I, I know in my heart I was right so it's the art no, I mean, your movies are timeless. I mean, we're talking about movies that are, you know, in, in the case Tiger Claw, you know, 29, 30-year-old films, and they hold up better than a lot of the action films you see today because they were they were real. They were real martial artists doing martial arts. That's what made that era so special to me. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I can't thank you enough for making them, and, and I can't thank you enough for taking the time to talk with me today. Cheers. Pleasure. Thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen. You have been listening to the Chronicles of Hollywood History. Thank you from Gomez Richmond Productions.